is in his holy temple, let the earth be silent in his presence. As we approach our holy God, we realize that we have sinned and come short of his glory. Let us therefore humbly confess our sins to him, kneeling, and say the words of confession together. Almighty God, O God, our righteous judge, our merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. We acknowledge that we are responsible for our sinfulness. Have mercy upon us, we pray you, and forgive us by the love which you have shown towards us in Jesus Christ, who for our sake died and rose again. Give us true repentance by the power of your Holy Spirit, and enable us for our evil ways, and serve you in newness of life. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant unto us pardon and remission of all our sins, time for amendment of life, and the grace and comfort of the Holy Spirit. Recognizing that God has forgiven us because Jesus, the Lamb of God, has died for us, let us adore him, saying, Salvation belongs to our God, who sits upon the throne, and to the Lamb. Amen. Blessing and glory and wisdom and thanksgiving and honor and power of might be to our God forever and ever. Amen. You have dealt well with your servants, O God. Blessed are you, O Lord. Your word is a lamp to our feet and a light to our path. Shall we be seated for the only lesson? The only lesson for this morning devotion is taken from the first epistle of Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 16, reading from verse 5. First Thessalonians, chapter 16, reading from verse 5. Now, I will come to you when I pass through Macedonia, for I am passing through Macedonia. And it may be that I will remain or even spend the winter with you, that you may send me on my journey wherever I go. For I do not wish to see you now on the way, but I hope to stay a while with you, if the Lord permits. But I will tarry in Ephesus until Pentecost. For a great and effective door has opened to me, and there are many adversaries. And if Timothy comes, see that he may be with you without fear. For he does the work of the Lord, as I also do. Therefore, let no one despise him, but send him on his journey in peace that he may come to me, for I am waiting for him with the brethren. Now concerning our brother Apollos, I strongly urge him to come to you with the brethren. But he was quite unwilling to come at this time. However, he will come when he has a convenient time. Watch, stand in the faith, be brave, be strong. Let all that you do be done with love. This is the word of the Lord. Father, we thank you for your word. Speak to us once again in the living echoes of your voice. In Jesus' name we pray. Quit ye like men. Standing on the already existed exegesis and introductions done to this passage, I add that to be quit like men simply means to be brave, to be strong, 
to be courageous. Quit you like men is therefore a call to brevity, a call to courageousness, a call to manliness, a call to manliness. That was the charge Paul gave to the Corinthian church and to you and I today. The church today is in a very critical, challenging, and difficult time that if care is not taken, many, many will abandon the faith. That is why Jesus said in Matthew 24, verse 13, it is those who endured unto the end that shall be saved. We have gone past the time of realization and being at ease in Zion and complacent. You will agree with me that the church is really sleeping. We thought we have arrived because of all the physical achievements we have made in the course of our services unto the Lord. Therefore, we become complacent. We became at ease. We become relaxed. Our theme is a call to brevity and courage to do manly things like the saints of old and win the kingdom as they did. Otherwise, many of us will become casualties following all that is happening in our time. Time is gone past for jingoisms and motivational talks that fuse our television stations and radio stations. It is high time to wake up from slumber, a high time to wake up unto manliness, a time to embrace the truth and stop being tossed about like infants, like children. That was the call. Stop being a child. Stop being children. Stop being chicken-hearted in the face of life challenges and difficulties that we face today. We should stop being tossed about like infants by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by trickling of men, and deceitful plotting, according to Ephesians chapter 4, verse 14. We must be men and not children. We must be men and not women. We must stand firm like men of old who went through worse things than we are facing today. Many have gone through life challenges, but in the face of such challenges, they rose up like men. They become manly. They become manly in their decisions, become manly in their thinking, become manly in their actions. Men like Joseph stood their ground in the face of great temptation, and he would rather spend all his life in prison you would rather rot in prison than to lose forever on the laps, the laps of his master's wife. Therefore, he could stand face to face with her and say, Look, madam, the Lord, my master had put me in charge of this whole house, but you are not part of them except you. Therefore, I can't do it. He landed in prison, but he never bothered because he knew what he was standing for. He was manly in taking that decision. Deborah, Jael, we are manly in their decision. When Barak developed suddenly chicken-hearted and women heart, Deborah took, to the, took the bull by the horn and went into the battlefield with a prophecy that, look, the glory, the honor in this battle we go to women not for you as a general. And we saw what Jael did when he saw, she saw Jabin running towards her. Suddenly, the spirit of manliness took over her. And she said, yeah, this opportunity to do things that men do. She became brave. She became courageous and was able to deceive Jabin. And of course, you know what happened. Without a sword, Without a spare, without any armory, she was able to bring down the dreaded King Jabin, who General Barak 
could not stand. That was manliness on her part. We can talk many of all the saints of old who stood their ground and talk about David when men became scarce in Israel and Goliath will come out and ask the Israelites, give me a man. I need a man that will stand with me. And there was no man in Israel until the boy David came. And when he had the challenge, the insult, the spirit of manliness took over him. And he was able, the boy David, brought down the dreaded Goliath. I pray for you this morning that the spirit of manliness will come upon you in the name of Jesus Christ. That where men dreaded to go, you will go and come out victorious. You can talk about men like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego who became men in the face of great challenge and difficulties. And they were able to stand before the king Nebuchadnezzar and say to him, Sir, we are sorry to disappoint you. As long as this matter is concerned, we are already dead. When men die, they are no longer afraid. Men who live for themselves, they die quickly. Men live, who live for self, die quickly. But for these men in Babylon, they count themselves dead already. Therefore, they were not afraid of the fire. Daniel was not afraid of the lions because they already count themselves dead. When men begin to die, God will begin to manifest himself in them. But while we continue to live for ourselves, the power of God will be far from us. Joseph stood for God. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego stood for God. Esther stood for God. He was able to say, if I perish, I perish. Why? The spirit of manliness took over her. The men, these men and others, as contained in the book of Hebrews chapter 11, did not become heroes by mere talks. They were quit like men and did manly exploits. In God's ways, kingdoms are not bought like it's being sold today. Christianity is not a business. Many people are running Christianity today as if it's a business. And people think that, oh, all about God is all about money. You can pay for prayers. You can pay for miracles. You can pay for your healings. You can pay. No, that is childish. Because they are simply men, I mean children and women. Men took the kingdom. They don't buy it. Men fought for the kingdom. They don't just receive it with mere talks. Therefore, if we must win the kingdom, we must be quick like men. We must fight bravely in the face of life challenges and difficulties that is staring on our faith today in our nation, Nigeria, and even in the church of God. The only way out is to be quick like men. If we become useless, like men of Israel in the time of Goliath, then God will not achieve great things with us. We are indeed in a time of scarcity of men, like it was in the days of Ezekiel. In Ezekiel chapter 22, verse 30, and heaven was in search for a man. And God said, I sought for a man. I looked for a man who will stand and build up the wall against the city that I may not destroy it. But I found none. There was nobody to stand. Yet, there were men there. It is like that in our own generation. We lack men. We lack people of courage. We lack people like Moses, who stood like a wall against God. When God threatened to destroy the people of Israel in the book of Exodus at the golden calf. And Moses could stand him and say, you can't do it. If you do it, what will the Egyptians say? What will the world say? They will hear it and thought that you have become incapacitated. God, you can't. 
and he was able to bring the hand of God down. We are at the intercessors of our time. We are at the Moseses of our time. We are at the Davids who could confront the Goliaths that is tormenting and intimidating us as God's people and as a church today. We can't find them unless we are ready to be quit like men. Or unless we are ready to open up to God, allow the spirit of manliness to take over us in this generation and in this time. As we go down this mountain, brethren, as we go down from here, having today to run through in difficult 2021, what do you want to be? You want to remain a woman? You want to remain a child? Or will you be ready to rise like men, telling God, I am going down this mountain as a man. I am going down this mountain to do manly things and not to be chicken-hearted anymore. Would that be your heart cry? If that is, God is ever ready to use us. Let us pray. Father, we thank you for your word. We pray that you pour your spirit of manliness into us and use us to achieve great things in this generation. In Jesus' name we pray. Shall we stand as we reaffirm our faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of sins, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Lord, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. O Lord, show your mercy upon us. O Lord, guide and defend your rulers. Endure your ministers with righteousness. O Lord, save your people. Give peace in our time, O Lord. O God, may clean our hearts within us. It collects for the week and the day. Merciful Father, your Son, Jesus Christ, heal the sick and restore them to fullness of life. Look with compassion on the anguish of the world and heal the afflictions of your people through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. O God, who is the author of peace and lover of concord, in knowledge of whom stands our eternal life, whose service is perfect freedom, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies, that we, trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ, our Lord. O Lord, our Heavenly Father, Almighty and everlasting God, who has safely brought us to the beginning of this day, defend us in the same with your mighty power, and grant that this day we fall into no sin, neither run into any kind of danger, but that all our doings may be ordered by your governance, 
to do always what is righteous in your sight through Jesus Christ our Lord. We are in prayers. Can you briefly talk to God? Thanking Him for all that He has been to us and all that He has done for us in the course of this conference. From Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and this Thursday morning, the Lord has been faithful. Can you just appreciate Him? For the miracles, for the healings, for all His servants He has used to minister to us. Pray as we commit today's meeting into His hands. Having started with us, pray that His presence will continue with us until this conference is over. Pray for Johnny Messies to some of our brethren who may be traveling back to their different dioceses, states, and stations this morning. Ask the Lord to grant them traveling mercies. Pray for our nation, Nigeria. The Bible said, The Lord maketh war to seize all over the earth, that God will speak peace to Nigeria. Pray for our church, that God will strengthen his servants. Pray for our primate, all our archbishops and bishops, our clergy and laity. Pray for yourself. Talk to the Lord, what are those burdens? What are those things you are trusting God for? Live it there. Live it there. Take your problems to the Lord and live it there. He will surely deliver you if you put your trust in Him. Take your problems to the Lord and leave it there. Can you let them at the feet of the cross? There is nothing difficult for him to do. Lord, in your mercy, Almighty God, you have given us the grace to bring before you with one accord our common supplications. Are you promised that when two or three are gathered together in your name, you will grant their request? Fulfill now, O Lord, the desires and petitions of your servants as may be most expedient for them, granting us in this world the knowledge of your truth and in the world to come the fullness of eternal life. Amen.